Heute an der Puru Sounds. You say we need to be together. You should probably get that check. You say you care for me. Even if my legs were dead. But behind all your words, I have. I never lied to you. You think you're better than me. Welcome to our podcast series, Today I'm joined by Tina Cross, Taisha Tari, and Ainsley Allen to talk about their inspiring journeys through music as versatile artists and stalwarts of the New Zealand music industry. This is the second part of a two-part series. This series title, Inspiring Journeys Through Music, The Versatile Artist, Episode 4. One running thing, though, I must say, like, it, it, it is pr- pretty prominent what you ladies were saying, that when you first started, I loved what you said there, Tina, it was fun. It was looked at as like a hobby. You know, this was just something that you just loved doing. And now, like you said, with the interception of social media, as Ainsley and it was saying, and just the way the industry has gone today, it's it has kind of just slightly taken that fun element away from it unless like you said you are connecting or vibing with those who are on your waka or on the same whārangi as you for that kaupapa being kaupapa driven too I love how you mentioned that Taish always down for kaupapa tēnā koutou I just do want to actually lightly touch on too before we all kind of quickly wrap this up as well you've mentioned it yourself there Tina around being Māori women indigenous ladies Māori women I have noticed just in the last well, it's always been there, but I must say, in the last, say, five years, the resurgence of Te Reo Māori has been huge, epic, actually, especially within the entertainment industry, music industry. You know, we've got so many waiata Māori coming up now. Um, for yous as, as kai waiata and musicians of yourselves there, e ma, how do you use, what's your thoughts around um, your experience by intersecting into your music. Tēnā koe, Taish, if you don't mind starting with you, Ete Hoa. Um, wow. <clears throat> um, it's been a, a journey. Um, um, how do I answer this? Um, because I am severely dyslexic, um, a lot of people don't know this, but and they think, oh, you, you can't read your left from your right, but it's actually more more complicated um, and I find it hard to learn new words and it, it, it doesn't discriminate it's discriminate against what language it chooses it's just foreign words um, when, I, when I see them as a text or when I hear them uh, there's a real disconnect um, and that's also with Māori so it's been a real it's a lot of mamai for me, you know, um, because it's really hard for me to learn it. So I have to spend hours, you know, going over 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 kupu and and sometimes it sounds a bit foreign. I know I've had a couple of um, mentors and they've said, "Oh, I haven't heard that word sung like that before." <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he sat in there with me in the studio for hours and um, it's just, it is a real journey and I still struggle with it um, and I've got a couple of projects that I'm involved in right now that I'm right in, in amongst it. But as Tina said, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway and that is so where I'm at because it is my language um, and it is going to be a journey but that's okay because it's my journey um and people will hear some of the words that I sing or say and go oh that sounds a bit that sounds a bit unusual um so I suppose um but what I connect with 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 our with our uh, language and, and with music is that it is so beautifully poetic that that's what I'm in love with I'm so in love with that like 
when we're writing at the moment actually for something and um, I have this beautiful lady um, assisting and 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 speaking into my life and and I, I will, will speak about things and and literally she just spits out all this poetry not spits but she it comes from her from her deep within and I'm I literally am gobsmacked of the beauty of our language is um, the, the essence of where it comes from is what I connect with I might get stuck on the words but I, I connect deeply with the feeling attached to those words and um, that's what I try and portray in the waiata that I that I write um, and that's why there's always English in my, my songs, um, most of them, because that's just where my journey is. So, um, yeah, but I think there's a lot within simple words in Te Rao Māori. We don't have to say a lot, you know. The essence of where those, those kupu come from, say it all, you know. Um, I just have to try and sing the feeling, so that's what I do. I hope that answered your question. Oh, that sure did, Taish. No, it really did. And to it, mimihi katika kia koe. Thank you for sharing um, and being vulnerable for a bit there, um, letting us know about uh, a condition uh, that you have. And I was sort of saying with, with te reo, but as you're explaining it, you know, um, with a few of the whānau that I teach and that, you know, with dyslexia, I try and teach te reo through patterns and through music, you know, because I find that whānau who do struggle with, you know, seeing text and that, when we start to feel the kupu, or feel the waiata, they just, oh, you just see them light up, like, immediately. So with you just being, you know, just convicted, ten akwe, Taish, thank you for confirming that. Take the tea off, off can't and it becomes can. That's another one of my fucking <laughs> Good one. Ten akwe, ten akwe. My spirit touches me Um, Ainsley, nā mihi nui kia koe te tuahini. We know we've, you've done, I think, a couple of waiata i te reo Māori. Um, and how was that experience for you uh, at te hoa? I've been learning te reo Māori for years. I started, um, actually, I went to Kohanga Reo back, back in the day um, before, like I've been learning te reo before it was even called a kōrero. Like I remember at um, <laughs> I remember at college we would have the tapes and we were learning by correspondence because they didn't even have it as a subject. It was ridiculous. Um, so for me to like my journey's been long, um, you know, because I wasn't brought up with my father on the so my, on my mum's side. I forgot to say that in my mahi, my mum's side we we hail from um, Ireland, Scotland. Wales. She's a fiery redhead woman and my father's from Rongofakata and we weren't brought up with my dad. Um, so we were brought up with my my beautiful mum. So for me the journey to reconnect with my Rongofakata and my um like Tikanga Maori has been a long process, but um a real healing process too, not just for me, but for my whanau. Um and having Rungofakata here in Wellington at Te Papa, um, we were the iwi in residence there for quite a number of years because they got stuck there because um, of COVID and all of that. So for me and my sons to reconnect 
through that and learn our kapahaka and songs from where my blood is was so beautiful. So for me to be able to release songs in Te Reo has been a real blessing. And as Taish was saying, like, um, for me, it's kind of like um, quite a meditation, like Taku Mama. I, I wrote that in English first, and then um, there was an idea being passed around to me, like, oh my gosh, it would be beautiful in Te Reo. So um, I was lucky enough to work with Leon Hekatu Blake. I know, such a blessing for my very first release of a Te Reo song to work with an amazing man like that, um, who knows the Te completely, was also another blessing. So to release that, and then for that song to be put on um, Spotify playlist, the um, Waiata Reo Māori playlist, then it even got put on a playlist... Um, like it's all completely in Te it got on a playlist with Apple Music, which is called Southern Craft, um, and it's an Americana playlist, which is huge, like it's, well, like we're little New Zealand, and this, no one can, under, like over there, Americans can't understand what we're saying, but because of the feel and the vibration of it, I suppose, it got picked up, so for me, that journey and the revitalization of Te Reo Māori is very important, um, not just for me, but for the generation that wasn't brought up with it, you know, and to be out there and me learning it myself still is something that I will keep pursuing and there's other projects in the pipeline that I'm working on. I'm just excited by it and I love it. I love singing in Te Reo. It's beautiful how it rolls off your tongue and I really enjoy um, working with um, like my mentors in the studio as well. We always have a laugh and I just, I really love it. So I'm so grateful and I'm so grateful for the initiatives that support it and the, um, you know, to Mangai Paho, they've been huge supportive and I just love them all there and I'm just so grateful to be in this position and to be one of the artists that can do this and Make it what it is. Te nā koe te tue hene, e, e tikana uh, te rā kōrero e te hua, you know, te reo, and I, it's funny how you mentioned though about being on, you know, a different playlist than that because, you know, when I'm at the gym and that, I sometimes have um, Selena, you know, come up on my, and she's, you know, she's singing a Mexican and that, but, I, you know, I love it, you know, it's the Waiata, you know, that movie just sort of hit it off, you know, so it, I th I'm sure that our other whanau across the season there would be feeling the same, you know, may not understand the kupu and that that are coming out in Te Reo Māori, but music is a universal language, and why is it universal? Because we feel it, we feel Feel the Waiata sister. So um, great to hear that itipu or tona tipu nei koe te reo. Uh, and kai te kaha uh, kakari tonu koe ki roto uh, i te rā āhuatanga. And not for only for you, but for your babies to come as well, you know. That future succession planning there. Um, well, same part to you there, uh, Tina. Te nā koe um, e te kohaia. Well, I'm in awe of what these... Uh, Wahine have, have just spoken about because both of them have recorded extensively in Te Reo. And it's it's lovely because I know that I can I can hear them both on online singing their beautiful waiata. Now for me, I have never recorded um in in Te Reo, uh, other than say the odd television show where I've I've you know taken a song that my father taught me. For me, um our beautiful language has come through my my whānau. So I grew up with particularly my mum, um, who is Māori Croatian, but she, I, I would say, and I don't know whether it's an era thing, but she would talk what I would call pidgin Māori in the home. So she'd say to me, go and get the washing off the line, and that would be in Māori. But we were, we were always in and out of it all the time. So I grew up knowing, knowing, you know, just I guess you'd call it basic. Um, it and and via so almost osmosis, uh, my auntie singing Māori songs and waiata. My grandfather was a minister, um, an Anglican minister. His little church was in, in Ahipara, in Roma Road. So the sermon was in Māori. Um, 
and, of course, all the hymns. So I relate to um, very much so to the old school way um, because I can't relate to the fact that I've, I haven't done it. I haven't taken a pathway in my own career and felt now is the time for me to record in Te Reo. It doesn't mean it won't happen. So I've, I have so much respect for these beautiful women who have, who have done that and for the fact that, that it is, we are able to do it. We are able to access funds to be able to, or to be able, you know, and, and it's just wonderful that, that, that um, via social media and what have you that we can spread it far and wide. But my own personal journey <clears throat> with our beautiful language in, in music is through my family. I just found an old tape, for example, on my phone. It's a video of one of my aunt, an auntie's 70th. She's now 80, where my mum and my other auntie were singing some random Māori songs that I, I recorded. Now, my mum passed nearly two years ago, or, or it would be 18 months ago. So these things are so precious. Um, and it's funny because when you're on a journey of your own career and you think you're the most important person in the world, hearing your aunties and your mum sing Māori is like you don't even think it's important because you just grew up with it. It's just there, and one day it's not there, and that's the point. So I guess I'm blessed, I'm very blessed to have, have had a history of hearing, you know, the hymns in the church whenever we went to, to Ahipara, because Granddad would make us go to church, um, and the aunties singing at, you know, different family gatherings, and including myself. I learned to play ukulele exactly that way. Auntie June Stowers, who Taisha knows well, she just said, okay, this is how you play. So, and they were always Māori songs. So I, re I relate through, 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 you know, in terms of your question, I hope I'm answering it, um, through Fano more than anything. Um, it's just there, it's something embedded in me. It's, it's inside me. Um, you know, a song that my dad taught me, uh, my dad died at 54, so I was only 22, and he taught me Begin the Begin in Māori, which is something I think was sung um, on the East Coast. He was He's buried in Tukumaru Bay. And um, it's, a, it's a beautiful song. And uh, I, when I was very young, I, can, I would vaguely remember, okay, what were the words that Dad taught me? So I got in touch with Rewa Ututaunga, and I said, I know you're going to know the right words because I wanted to sing it on an Anzac special one year. And it was really important to me that I had the correct lyrics from Ngati Pro, which I now have, and I can sing it anywhere if I want to. And it's just beautiful because Dad taught me that. Just I guess when you're young, you kind of go, oh, yeah, I know it well enough, but oh, attention to detail. Hey, Tosh. <laughs> <laughs> we have this thing in the Lady Killers. It's like, oh, God, we could be hours learning the same thing. And Ainsley will relate and to we this were, too. And we were. And we were. We were hours. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I honestly, I have so much respect for. I know Taisha's early Māori recordings. Well, not so early. A few years ago, of her beautiful material in Tiro, and yours too, Ainsley. Taku Mama is such a beautiful waiata. So you know, it's just lovely just hearing these these two women just relate to their own journey recording in Tiro. Tēnā koe, tēnā koe. I must say too, like, uh, you know, no, tino ata hua ngā mahi uh, taish uh, a koe hoki um, Ainsley within your career and intersecting it in, into your um, music on, on such a, a global platform as well. But I must credit you there, Tina. I think that's the best way that we can embrace Ataha Māori too is in that intimate sense, you know, exactly what you said. You had a perfect opportunity to remember your papa and by capturing capturing that waiata and going back to get the correct kupu. I don't know if you've seen it on um, online, but uh, I think it was at the Anzac uh, special. We had a, a wahine doing our national anthem and kind of really destroyed the kupu. But what you did, you did that extra step in making sure that he tika ngā kupu because it was more than just the waiata, it was in representation of your papa. And that's, some, that's a waiata you'll carry with you. Mo ake tonu atu. So... Thank you for sharing such an intimate um, part in your in your music career, but that's not so you know globally known. This is something that you know just for you and the Tokumaru Bay Fano know. You know, so thank you for sharing that with us, uh, Tina. Absolutely beautiful. 
All right, so we know that you three have, have a lustrous career, you know, very lustrous, but I just wanted to know, Taish, and of course Ainsley and Tina, is there still something that you still want to achieve within your music career that you have not yet achieved yet? Is there something that you still want to, um, you know, get on a stage or, or do something that you haven't yet achieved and you're thinking, I might just look towards doing that in the next, you know, in these coming years, especially with COVID now uh, making it much easier for us within our industry. Tēnā koe taish, koe te wā. Yes, I'm conjuring up. Um, the cogs are turning and um, the corridors are having are starting because um, it all starts with a corridor for me. And yes, I am shifting into um, into some things. Um, and there are un it's unknown territory. So yes, as going back to Tina, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, I have to know my truth and, and why I want to do it. Um, so that's been a lot of thought process. But yes, it's I, I'm fascinated by sound and, and, and the sound that the voice makes, especially from, from our very ancient tones in Māori. You know, we, we, ha we have different tones, frequencies, um, notes, um, and I'm exploring those um, in, in, a, in a source of healing um, I, I do believe that that music is incredibly healing and it actually manages to pierce dense matter and enter the space where it needs to be. That's why when you feel something so magical, you get the hairs on the back of your neck or, you know, your eyes leak, um, you know, anything like that. So I, that's what I'm exploring. Those, I'm not sure what it looks like yet, but um, I've actually got an up-and-coming project uh, that we're doing at the Auckland Art Gallery for Matariki, um, and we we will be doing some of that there, um, just ever so gently, touching the water and seeing how it feels and f feeling how scared I might be, um, because it, it really is a, that exposed sound of just raw voice, um, and I think sometimes the feeling for me is underneath where all the kupu sits. So um, us as, as Māori, we've always pulled from those, you know, through karakia, through karanga. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm, that's what I'm exploring. So I don't know what it looks like, um, but um, I'll, I'm sure I'll find it out on, on that journey. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm going. Oh no, that's fantastic. That it just as you were explaining it to me, a word like this is the first time I actually sort of got like some chills coming up my back. So I was like, oh, okay. Even though the corridor all quid, this must be this is going to be an exciting journey for you to um, embark on. And like you said, exploring la momo oro o te te tuku oro, you know. So fantastic oro sound. Yeah. Oh yes, I think yeah. I think sound is so powerful. Um, and especially in certain frequencies, so it, um, that's 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 what my thing is. I'm I'm going to head down that path and see what I find and see what I feel, and um, yeah, explore it. Oh, how exciting! That's going to be an exciting journey. Finishing off with anything, um, anything that you'd like the listening audience to um, take away with them. Um, if they were kayakwe. Uh, oh, um, firstly, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's an, an absolute honour. Um, I love all these wahine um, and uh, all of you. Thank you, Tony, um, and f for the brothers behind the scenes. Um, it's always lovely to connect, even on this platform. It's been happening a lot lately. Uh, I see more people online through a... Zooey or whatever you call it. Um, I've learnt some new technology, uh, so that's good. Um, I, I suppose my takeaway, what would it be? Find that find that one thing uh, that that you really you really want to do, and, and and just because no one else is doing it, explore it and and see what it looks like to you, because that could actually become your 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 truth. Um, and I and and. Try and block out the rest of the noise that takes up a lot of our headspace because that's a big, a big, sometimes a big influencer on on if we do things or or if we don't do things. So, 
sometimes it might just hit the jackpot and um, look after your heart in music it's really important to keep your heart safe it can sometimes be a real big beast our industry so surround yourself with people who care about you and 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 yes we we are very fortunate to have met beautiful people in my music careers and some of them sitting right there um, and we've become um, lifetime sisters you know more than just friends but your your music people who you surround yourself with they will become your extended whānau and it's it's very much needed in this industry you know you'll find it very hard to uh, do it on your own and music isn't meant to be done on our own it's meant to be shared and it's as, as Tina said it's it's meant to be connected um, that's that's where we get the fun from and and music should be fun if it's getting too hard Taiho, take a break, have a cup of tea, have a glass of wine, revisit it on another day, you know. So that's, I suppose that's my takeaway. Just uh, find the joy in, in, the, in the music that you create and, and the peace will come. Oh, that was deep, man. Tēnō, tēnō, a tākua e te hoa. Thank you so much, Taish. We do appreciate your time that you have given I'm us sorry, this morning. I'm sorry, I have to go. Yes, kei te pai. Ngā mihi nui, and we'll see you back in the bay in the next couple of months. Yes. Yeah, e te hoa. Love you guys. Love you all. Love you, love you, mate. Love you, my mate. Bye. You too. Ka Bye. Kite. Keep e safe, keep safe. Bye. Ka pai. Oh, way. Wow, that was absolutely beautiful. Um, she's abs uh, such a pleasure to have her come home um, a lot here in Hawke's Bay and, of course, being an ambassador for the uh, Māori Music Awards and now she's, she's just an absolute treasure to have amongst us as well as your your guys self. So just backtracking a bit there, going back to that previous path I there, um, Ainsley, if you don't mind, is there something in your career that you have not yet achieved or something that you are wanting to achieve and what is that? What is that little something, Ewa? There's so many things that I still want to do. Like I, like Taisha said, like I feel I haven't peaked yet. There's so much, like I want to go to Nashville and stand on the Grand Old Offrey stage where Patsy Cline and some of my musical heroes stood. I still haven't done that yet. Um, there's a lot that I want to do and there's a, a few projects that I've got in the pipeline, um, you know, with Te Reo involved um, that I want to do and that I want to release um, in the not too distant future. With some, yeah, an artist that I've worked with in the past, but we've never actually recorded together. So I really want to get that done. Um, and that's been a dream of mine forever. So that's um, something that I'm working on at the moment. Oh, fantastic. Exciting. Some exciting stuff coming our way from Ainsley. What about yourself there, Tina? You know you've had the most lustrous career ever. I'm sure there's still something out there that maybe you still want to achieve. Yeah, well, I, I think there will always be. And I think it's that just trusting your gut instinct and knowing that um, – there is always something around the corner. I, I, I think I'm, I'm in a phase where I'm feeling like I just need to come back into myself. I'd like to start writing again and I'd like to do something really quite intimate. So, um, you know, like an, an acoustic style of um, recording, I guess. Um, you know, it's a funny thing too because I guess the statement that I want to make these days is more in a way for me and if it resonates with an audience or others, that's wonderful. But it's it's, it's a feeling of, of you know, I'm, I'm 63, so I still feel that I have a lot of years of singing. I've always loved the performance side of things, the actual visual, the doing. That's why I think I've done so much musical theatre. There's always been so much um, joy for me being able to step into another character and be somebody else. I've always loved that. So I think at this point in time, I mean, we've had two cracks at Wicked in the last period, um, the last eight, uh, year, where both times the show was shut down because of COVID um, in Auckland, of course. So it may well resurface 
And I would love to revisit that role of Madame Morrible. She's a manipulative, difficult, um, loud, controlling character. Now, that whole thing appeals to me. I guess I come from a background of that. But at the moment, my feeling is that the new thing I'd love to create is more of an intimate, um, again, int um, original material, more acoustic. That's kind of my, my feeling for the next couple of years anyway. And it's just nice to know that there's no pressure. It's just, it's, it's a wonderful feeling to be at this point in, in my life where I feel like, yeah, I can see that in my, in my future because it, it, is a, it is a gut feeling, um, but there's no pressure. There's no need to go, it has to happen tomorrow. It's all fine. Take the play. So, and I've never found that easy. I've never found it easy to just sit and wait. I'm not very good at that. I've always been impatient. It's like, I've got to create, create, create. And I think for the first time in my life, I've just felt like I can just sit and be and be patient. I know that there is something coming. Um, and that's kind of my feeling. I think it's an, an intimate, it's in the writing, it's in the time and the space that I give myself to be able to create that. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Fantastic, Etehua, absolutely. And it's beautiful to hear between both of you, and including Taish, that, you know, no matter where you are in your career or where you are um, in your space and time, that there's always something more out there for you to um, achieve, for you to still do. And it's actually quite humbling to hear that because, you know, a lot of people can get kind of carried away and be like, oh, you know, I've done my EP, I've put out a couple of albums, I'm kind of done, you know, like, you know. But it's good to hear with you three, Wahine, that no, you know, there's still more out there for you to achieve. And I think, uh, once again, Tina, you're, I'm really blessed to hear that, you know, you're just happy with just being patient, being in your present moment, that is something actually to really behold, Ewa, because, mm. you know, okay. even my yeah, even myself, you know, I ex I totally agree. You know, I'm always go, 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 go. You know, uh, next co-papa, next project, next co-papa, next project. You know, I don't want to rest. I want to carry on. But with you saying you just want to be present in your right now and your time and space, ka nui te mihi ki a koe te hua. Beautiful. So to wrap us up, as we asked um, Taishi, do you have any um, last words, personal advice that you'd like to share with our listening audience to wrap us up? Um, well, you know, I think, I think um, if we have listeners out there who are aspiring to be in the music industry. I think it's it's embracing the music industry as it is now. I mean, we have, we have um, revisited each of us our past, very different pathway, um, understanding and knowing how things are in the social media world. I think I'm not telling anybody anything. I think they fully understand, people who are doing it or getting into the industry now, I think, though, the same principles apply, uh, feeling the fear and doing it anyway, trusting yourself, um, surrounding yourself with the right people, um, having, having that connection and feeling like, you know, because we are constantly giving of ourselves. And I think that resonates. I think the honesty um, that we put out there as people, let alone musicians, um, and kaiwaiata, I think people recognise that. It's, it's, it's the same as singing a song. It can be just singing a song or it can be connecting with people that you're presenting that song to, singing to, even through a camera, even through a television camera where there's nobody looking at you. There may be no live audience. Um, it's just feeling. It's that feeling, that, that connection with people. But I think you know, the, the pearls of wisdom, I think it's interesting because we are each and each and well, each of us on our own journey, our own pathway. Um, and and we will and we do recognize that within ourselves. Um, I think feeling at a point in your life where you can just sit patiently and wait, that's another thing. I think it's a very fast-paced world. We um, we just do exactly what you said, Crystal. 
Let's cope up, but go, 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 go. Um, giving yourself some time and some space, I think that's also really good for our creative juices. Um, so, you know, Taisha, I, I have always felt is such a spiritual wahine. You, you, you get that feeling from her deep within when she expresses herself musically as well, the most beautiful expression of feeling when she sings. Um, but even when you hear her kōrero, it's, it's, and that, that spiritual journey is something that I think that, I don't know, I, I, I think we, we naturally have it as wahine who sing. We, we can't help but give of ourselves and our waiata and our, what, what is inside us. It's, it's impossible not to. Um, so, and, and Ainsley, I see the beautiful journey you were on. I can see you on that stage in Nashville. I so can. I so can. You, it's just lovely to just see the energy that surrounds you and what you are presenting at the moment. It's just, you know, for me who, I, honestly, I've been around, I feel like a million years, and yet I still feel that there's enough freshness, that there's still enough vibration coming into me that I can sit, wait, be patient, and something else will come. But I, I look at, at, at you and Taisha and I can just feel the energy bubbling and I can feel the creation that will happen for both of you. I can't wait to, to see you, hear you, in your next project, and hey, I'll certainly be following you if you're on that stage in Nashville, girl. That's for sure. And you will be. Mm. So your pearls of wisdom, I, I think, well, no, what was the, the question in the beginning? What we would leave, what we would leave behind. I think I've probably said it all. I'm just kind of waffling and rabbiting on now, but I feel like it's all, it's all mix and mingle. It's all intermixed. It's kind of where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. And I think the feeling, um, it's all there for people to, to access. Um, and I think if, if, if you are naturally musical, if you have that inside you, I think just trust yourself. Just trust yourself. It's going to come out. Mm. Yeah. Kia ora. Yeah, everything you have said, Tina, I totally agree with. I would say, um, like, the surrounding yourself with the right people is the key. Because, you know, if it's feeling wrong, it will be wrong. The, you know, it's just, it's it's not rocket, rocket science. It's like, just be honest with yourself be honest with the people you're working with. If you don't like it, it's not going to come across as really authentic and cool because it's just not going to be. So you have to be honest with yourself and what you're doing, with the people you're working with, and then it will be honest and people are going to pick it up because it's so authentic and you don't, there's no BS about it, you know. You've just got to be honest with your, with what you're doing and your music that you're creating and the people that you're, you're with. Lovely. Ka nui te mihi kia kōrua. Um, and you know what, like we said, we're finishing off on like that, talking around speaking our truths, you know, listening to that inner intuition that we all um, have been blessed with as wahine Māori, as Indigenous women as well. So, um, hei whakatepe, just to wrap us up, tēnā kōrua. Uh, this has been an absolutely... You know, one of my tick boxes, especially with you, um, Tina, at the hoa, like it's just been an absolute pleasure and honour to sit in front of you and interview you. Even though you're all the way over there in Australia, you've made time for us here in Aotearoa, and it just shows. Yes, she's a true, true wahine from Aotearoa. So thank you, kia koe, Ainsley. Though, like we said. Oh, I, I just keep on watching you. So she's definitely one of those um, New Zealand um, artists that we just continuously support and watch. I used to work on the um, Iwi radio um, station. So, you know, we're very familiar with a lot of our uh, New Zealand artists out there. And, yeah, they everyone here in Kahungunu knew that if you're listening to my show, you're listening to a lot of New Zealand artists. And Wama. So, yeah, support Tautoko, you fellas, always. Otira. Atui tēnā, um, kua mutu ngā neke neke ki tēnei oh, tahi, we have now wrapped up. I want to say, up. Crystal, thank you. Oh, thank you for your, for your your beautiful wairua. It's just been 
fantastic. You've thank just brought you. us all together beautifully. Thank you. Oh, tēnā koe. Thank you, Tina. And thank you once again, Ainsley. No, it's my privilege uh, to work alongside, of course, Roger and Tony uh, with Sounds NZ. And I get to do wonderful jobs like this and interview beautiful wahine and tāne like yourselves. So thank yous for bearing with me and, of course, our team here. Tēnā koutou. Walk away, walk away. Journeys through music, the versatile artists. A podcast produced by Sound Centre for New Zealand Music, Toi Te Ara Pruoru. Presented by me, Crystal Edwards, with today's guests, Tina Cross, Taisha Tari, and Ainsley Allen. And that was the second part of a two part series. Thanks to series producers Tony Huata and Roger Smith. Sound engineer, Phil Brownlee, production assistance from Jonathan Engel, marketing, Leonie Fenter, and executive producer, Diana Marsh. Special thanks to Tina Cross for Walk Away, Taisha Tari for Karanga, and Ainsley Allen for Better Than Me. Thanks to the Stout Trust for providing the funding to make this podcast series. And thank you for listening. To hear or find out more about this podcast or for more information about the music of Aotearoa New Zealand, go to sounds.org.nz. That's S-O-U-N-Z. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Koi te ara puoru, sounds.